Hi everybody, my name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jason. We are the Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. And it is a preparation day, everybody. Hey! And everybody is uh, everybody's sad around this table, but hopefully not. Jade, you sad? Nope. Just sore? Uh, a little bit sore, yeah. yeah. Eli, you doing alright? Yeah. You look kind of sad. Maybe it's the mop hair. It makes you look kind of like a Muppet. Sad. <laughs> All right. Um, this is a preparation day. It is month 11 on our creator's calendar. That makes it the third day as far as um, this week. Uh, no, actually, the sixth day of this week is the third day of January. Is the 12th day on our creator's calendar. February. February. February sorry. Yep. February. Um, and um, did you guys see? Cade knows how many downloads we had. Do you know how many downloads we had? Not, not, I'm, I'm talking in two months, all books together. Oh, I think I saw, I think I saw, so, I think I saw the first number. I don't know the last three numbers, but I know the, like the big number. Is. What's the big number? 5,000. Okay, yeah, 5,000. Oh, that's, that's the big number, 5,000. Yeah, but it's 5,000 something. No, it's just, well, it's over 5,000. It was 5,300 or something or something like that. So it was over 5,000. Anyway, that was a lot of downloads um, of this kind of stuff. And it is very, very cool that we are able to do this kind of stuff. Um, there was something I was going to say on the calendar. Today, but I guess I don't remember what Tomorrow's it was. A Shabbat. Tomorrow's a Shabbat. Thank you very, very much. Yep. Yay. Okay. And um, let's just get right into this today. So we are on Yokan in 13. And um, anyone have anything interesting at all? Um, no, I don't think anything interesting. Jade, you're going to be sad when we have to get rid of uh, Theodore, Cal Theodore? Maybe. So you're going to still stay in here? Um, I don't know. So this is the first thing. Boss Clan has never, ever um, killed our, one of our own cows that we eat. We've never, ever done it. We end up giving them hugs and loves, and we walk them to their death when they get sick, but we've never, ever eaten one. Our dogs have been not feasting, but they've been eating for, I mean, a good solid years over our dead cows that we have and things of that nature. Um, this will be the very first thing. And in our Boss Clan, food is very... Um, Short and short notice. Meat is something we rarely ever ever get. Um, we definitely don't get it in mass, and we definitely don't get it every night. Um, but it'll be very interesting because I mean, it's usually like what we'll have in our freezer is maybe two pounds of hamburger tops, and Nicole will make a whole bunch of meals out of that, just a little bits of, of stuff there. So it's gonna be real interesting um, popping uh, Cal Theodore and uh, seeing how that goes. Um, are you guys getting ready to sharpen your knives? Yeah, they need sharpened. Everything's sharpened? You're gonna have to sharpen it. Any thoughts on um, the first cow that you guys have to um, actually eat in this? Would, a, you, would you rather keep him as a pet? Um, I don't think so, I mean. Anyway, uh, let's take a quick vote. He is a, he is a, he is, he is in a kind of a becoming a troublesome cow. He's yeah, running. he loves running away. He loves uh, not going, listening. He, uh, he starts screaming and then starts running for the hills. I think there are cows in heat because uh, a lot of cows around here have heard screaming, so I think they're all trying to find their cows. Yeah, I think it is, and they're trying to break through everything. Um, anything, I mean, how are you guys going to deal with this? We've never, we've had Ted for five years. Pet is as long as our cat. Our, actually, t four years because Leo, Leo, our pet dog, one time got out, and that was the first cow that the dogs got. And I had to fight Leo and stop. He had a he would not let go of the cow, and that was before I knew actually how to fight the dogs. And Leo was real small at that time, but he was still big enough to take the cow down. Um, and Ted wasn't very big at that point. Ted wasn't very big either, and so it was a mess. And that was when. I discovered that punches to the dog's head doesn't release them. Nothing releases the dog. I think Cade was doing some, I don't remember what he was doing, but uh, whatever it was, they don't release. You literally just grab inside of their mouths and pull the mouth open, which is where everybody goes, oh, that's crazy. You, you know, you shouldn't do that, but there's no other way to get them to open their mouths unless they choose to open their mouths. And when he has a big stake in his mouth, he's not going to open his mouth. All right, so I guess we'll get on to that. Next week is going to be interesting for us. We will have to deal with this. Um, and I, I don't mean to make a light of this because it is definitely not a light subject around here. And um, it's really easy for you guys to go to the store and to buy food and things of that nature. And that's, you know, that's the world that uh, we're all into that, you know, nobody really like slaughters their own animals or things of that nature because we have we have supermarkets. And I don't know what year the supermarkets came to light, but um, back in the days, they didn't have supermarkets. and. What was 30s it? Or 40s? 30s and 40s. They had the first supermarket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So prior to that, you know, they just went down to Hank's cow shop and they, you know, they looked at the bull and they clipped him and, and they 
he cut him up right there. And so this will be interesting. Boss Clan can first pet we've ever had to um, slaughter. Okay, John 13. And before the festival of the Pesach, Yahushua, knowing that his hour had come, that he should move out of his, this world unto the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. All right. Um, he says he should move out of this world unto the Father. What does that mean? Are you going back to be himself again? <laughs> nope, he's not going back to be himself because the Trinity is not real. He's backing up his suitcase and he's flying home. Yeah, he's going to become himself again. He, uh, he decided to have a vacation where himself wasn't himself. He decided to pretend to be his son. And then he said he was the son, but then everyone thought he was the father. Real confusing, right? The Trinity's a bust. Okay, two. And supper taking place. The devil, having already put it in the heart of Yahuda from Kiriath of Shimon to deliver him up. Yahushua, knowing that the father had given all into his hands and that he had come from Yahuwah and was going to Yahuwah. Okay, a couple things. Um, this says the devil put this into his heart. Um, is that a good excuse when you guys do bad things? Ah, you know, the devil, no, put, the, the devil put this in my heart, you know? I don't think so. No? You have to choose to fight that, right? Well, you, you do. You either you either fold to Hazatan or you don't. Yeah, and I mean, if you start getting an idea that, um, ah, I wonder if I should uh, offer the Messiah up or something. I wonder if I should take the, the son of the Most High and have him killed. You know, that's probably the devil in your heart, right? That's probably something that um, right out of the gate you should know that you shouldn't murder or you shouldn't do deceptive things and definitely shouldn't offer up the son of the Most High. Okay, um, now... Here it says, knowing that the father had given all into his hands. Now, if he was the father, this would sound a little crazy, right? Yep. Um, so the father gave everything into his hands. But if he was the father, then why did he give anything into his hands? Why didn't he just come down and say, look, I, I'm Elohim Most High? Why did, he, why did he pretend that he was somebody else when he wasn't or he was? It makes no sense. I mean, it literally says he's going to the father. The father gave him things like... I, th I think it would be a little more clear. It would be like, because if you're like trying to figure this out, I don't think he'd make it so confusing where you're like, well, I'm three people, but I'm only one, and uh, I'm, but I'm none of them at all. Yeah, and you see, that is the thing about the Trinity. Not a single place anywhere in the scriptures says that, right? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are the same individuals. In fact, everything from the beginning of the book to the very end is separate, right? And so this is, this is crazy. Okay. Yahushua, knowing that the Father had given all into his hands and that he had come from Yahuwah and was going to Yahuwah, rose from supper and laid aside his garments. And having taken a towel, he girded himself. After that, he put water into a basin and began to wash the feet of the Talmudian and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. And do you guys suppose he just um, started decloaking like in front of everyone or did he go to a separate room? Um, I don't know. You, you think no, it, it was like a ceremonial thing? I mean, I, I think he probably would. Did they have underwear back in those days? I don't think so. I don't think they had like the same kind of clothes that we had. I don't think they had any kind of underwear. I don't know. They might. They had like something like the loin garments. They Did had. they? I don't know what they had. I honestly have no idea. Um, but I'm just wondering how that went down. Did he go into the other room and then get you know? Because it would have gone like you're going to the beach, right? You're being kind of a you know. Um, <laughs> you don't want to get wet. Is the whole point. And so this is like a, a ceremony. An odd question, but um, I was just curious. And he, so he came to Shimon Kepha and said to, and he said to him, Adonai, do you wash my feet? Hold on. That doesn't sound right. And so he went to Shimon Kepha and he said to him, I don't think he said, is this, or is that the right translation? And, and Yahuwah said to him, Yahushua answered him. After this five, verse five and six. Six. Uh, then he came, I said, then he came to Shimon he said, Kepha. Uh, Adonai, do you wash my feet? Okay, so it sounded weird when I was reading it, though. And so he came to Shimon Kepha and said to him, Adonai, why, why do you wash my feet? Why would... So Peter should actually be in that, but it's... Or Kepha, but it's not because it's an added thing. Yeah, Sefer, Sefer says, Then he came to Shimon Kepha, and then it has a colon, and it says, And Kepha said unto him, Adonai, do you wash my feet? Like, so it's like added in by man. You see, mine has Peter in... When he came to Simon Peter... Peter said to him, Lord, are, yeah, because this doesn't sound, this doesn't, it, it sounds like how this is that Messiah says, Adonai, do you wash my feet? Mm -hmm. Because, and so he came to Shimon Kepha. Are we sure that is, that's what's in the Holy Scripture? That's what it says. I All guess right. the only way to do it is to know is because the he isn't capital. And so he came to Shimon Kepha, and yeah, I guess it would be. And he right there said to him, 
Adonai, do you wash my feet? It sounded like Yehosh was asking him. That's that. that's it why I, so I thought we had messed this translation up or something or, or did this. But um, no, because no. it's out of everywhere. Because even this one is added in. Okay. All right. Yep. So it was Kepha. It says, um, <laughs> "Are you gonna wash my feet?" Seven. Yahushua answered and said to him, "You do not know what I am doing now, but you shall know after this." Kepha said to him, "By no means shall you wash my feet ever." Yahushua answered him. If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Shimon Kepha said to him, Adonai, not only my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Yahushua said to him, He who has had a bath does not need to wash except his feet, but is cling altogether. And you are cling, but not all of you. All right, so I guess that's good news for you, Jade. Um, <laughs> Jade's our speedy bath guy. Um... What does he mean by right, this, guys? He who has had a bath does not need to wash except his feet. Oh, your feet But it's clean. How long, the, how long was it before these guys had a bath? Uh, what was the last time these guys had all had a bath? I think, it's, I think they probably go a few days. I don't think they like. I don't think they have a bathtub in their house. I think they have to like go down to like a river somewhere and find like. I've spent a few days without showering. You don't. You don't start smelling real good, right? Your clothes don't start smelling real good. Everything is. It's not so good. I'm just curious though. He says. Um, uh, he who had a bath does not need to wash except his feet, but is cling altogether. What is the point he's making with this? Um, that uh, you, you only need feet wash. It must be I need to wash you. Well, this is what Kepha said, right? He's like, well, you know, don't just do my feet. Do my hands and my head. He's like, he wanted the whole bath. This wasn't the point, right? This was a ceremony of servitude, right? This is something that when you touch another person's feet, Everybody's going to go, oh, that's, that's really gross, right? The first thing people think of with feet are hot, stinky feet, right? Dirty, stinky feet. Um, and so Messiah is grabbing these hot, dirty, stinky feet. What are you laughing at me for, Mystical? It's funny. What's well, funny? Hot, dirty, stinky feet. Yeah, it is. Well, it is. Hey, anyone here want to wash my feet? Um, do you need me to? <laughs> is this a test? It is a test, right on camera. No, that's what I'm saying, right? No, you're not going to voluntarily want to wash some person's other dirty, stinky feet by default. That's the thing. If you want to wash their hands, that's one thing. Okay, here, let me wash your hands. Let me wash your, you know, everything. But the feet are something different. Okay, 11. For he knew who would deliver him, so he said, you are not all clean. So when he had washed their feet and taken his garments and sat down again, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Adon, and you say, well, for I am. Then if I, Adon and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I gave you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Okay, this is an example, right? This is, this is the example. What example are we getting out of this? How, what do we learn from this? And what should we be doing because of this example? As a person over us served us, he was our servant, and we should become the servant of other people by showing our faith that way. Yeah, yeah, and if you have an opportunity to serve others, and I mean, it doesn't just need to be washing the feet. If you're able to serve people and do things that are, you know, beneficial to them and help them out and show them love and show them compassion and show them, you know, when you wash someone's feet, it's like the ultimate... Um, I don't know. It's just servitude? It, it's servitude. Yeah, it's the ultimate servitude, right? You can do a lot of stuff to people, but when you wash their feet and you you take those dirty, stinky feet and you wash them and you you put your hand and wash them, I mean, it's just it's it's a sign of full on compassion. Okay, sixteen. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is an emissary greater than he who sent him. If you know these, Baruch are you if you do them. Okay, this is, he's blessed, blessed are if you do them. What is he talking about? Uh, be a servant. He's, what he's talking about is if you know these, right? right? That a servant is not greater than his master and an emissary is greater than that. If you know this and you're blessed if you do such a thing. The servant says if you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Yeah, and happy, I think happy would be blessed, right? Blessed, happy. Um, kind of the same thing. Maybe not, but close. 18. I do not speak concerning all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture might be fulfilled. He who eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. And I thought that was interesting. Um, in the world that we come from of, of like MMA and fighting and things of that nature, when you lift up a heel against somebody, I mean, you're, you're, 
it's it's a bad deal. I mean, it's it's literally um, <laughs> the the last the last thing that you do when you lift a heel against somebody. Um, it's not just a it's a, it's like a stomping thing, right? It is a, it is literally you're 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 hurting somebody badly, and so Messiah knew that the one that was with him is is the one that literally is is trying to stomp him. Eight nineteen. Now I say to you, before it takes place, that when it does take place, you shall believe that I am. Uh oh, here it is. You shall believe that I am. Um, so everybody will take the Trinitarian people, will take 80 verses out of John and discount them and say, ah, no, it doesn't matter what he says. And right here, listen, right here, you shall believe that I am. This is not saying that Messiah Yahushua or Jesus the Christ, who, there's no J's in Hebrew, he is not saying he is Yahuwah. He's the son, right? The father, the son, the father, the son. The Father, the Son, right? Pretty simple, right? Is it, yeah, right? I, it's two of you. We got the Father, and we got the Son. son I mean, lo, it's lo, like basic things you learn as a child: mommy, daddy, the, son. Yeah, dad, son, dad, son. Not the same individual ever. Twenty. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who receives whomever I send receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. Whoa, Trinity breaker, right? Receives him who sent me. Who sent him? Yahuwah. Well, if, if he is Yahuwah, then him sent himself, right? None of this would make sense if the Trinity was valid at all. Okay, 21. When Yahushua had said this, he was troubled in spirit and witnessed and said, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you shall deliver me up. The Talmudian looked at one another, doubting of whom he spoke. And one of his Talmudian, whom Yahushua loved, was reclining on the bosom of, on the bosom Yahushua. Does it say on the bosom Yahushua? Isn't there supposed to be an of there? Was reclining on the bosom Yahushua? It's on of, it's of Yahushua. Yeah, you missed an of in there. All right, yeah, so um, Jade, Eli. Okay, so 23 needs changed, Mr. Cole. So think about this. Think about what kind of relationship these guys have. No, yeah. They're pretty close here. Yeah, I mean, as kids, you guys would lay in the chair with me and you would lay your head on the, the chest of... You know, you guys would lay all around me and everything. Um, as we get older, it's less and less. Probably because you guys reek more and more. <laughs> I'm just I'll, break, I'll break the couch. No, no. Yeah, yeah. You're, too, you're too big. Yeah, you're too big to hang out. But what kind of relationship would these people have with Messiah if if you literally put your head on another man's chest? They're very close. They're like... like, like, like a family. Even close to family, there's right? Like, there's like a few of them. I think John, Peter, and James are like all super, super close to Messiah more than the others. Yeah, and I mean, even if you go to a family reunion, you're not going to go hang out and put your head on other people. I mean, you don't have that kind of... Even in a regular family, you don't have that kind of a relationship. I mean, maybe in some circumstances, dad's on his last two, two cents. He's dying. He puts his head on your chest and dies or something. Something of that, <sighs> right? But I mean, as far as it's like hanging out, this was... these. Individuals loved Messiah, and Messiah loved them enough that he was this kind of family to them. And so this is the this is an example of the family that we will have in the kingdom to come, that we have this kind of love. And, and where we don't have this kind of love now, and we don't have this kind of stuff where we just feel a little awkward hanging out and putting our head on, on people's chest because it would just be weird. So let's hang on. Continue. 24. Shimon Kepha then motioned to him to ask who it was of whom he spoke. So it says he motioned to him. So did he go, come here, Messiah, come here. Come so here. that's not a capital him. So I think he was talking to the one who was laying on uh, Yehoshua's chest. It was probably with John, right? As I was thinking. John well, or, or... It's one of those. One of those guys. Okay, so yeah, and then again, so this is a weird translation. Shimon Kepha then motioned to him to ask who it was of whom he spoke. Yeah, and if... Uh, it, it, it's not a capital he or for him or, or H for him. Yeah, last uh, night we were proofing it. Jaden was thinking that it was uh, Kepha that was laying on him, but I don't. I didn't think so. Yeah, I think it was maybe John or, or uh, who else do we know that had a, a close relationship with the Messiah? James. James. Yeah, it could be James. It could be Yaakov. It could be his brother. Yeah. Yeah, that would be that would be interesting though. I just can't see you guys putting your heads on each other's chest. Maybe, they had a close maybe pulling each other's hairs, or like putting fingers in each other's ears, or like I don't know, messing with each other, or something like that. But I can't see it as like hanging out like this. Okay, let's continue on. So, and leaning back on the breast of Yahushua, he said to him, "Adonai, who is it?" Yahushua answered, 
It is he to whom I shall give a piece of bread when I have dipped it. And having dipped the bread, he gave it to Yahuda from Kerio of Shimon. All right, do you think Yahuda was right there when he said this? Or do you think he told them this and then he went and he grabbed the bread and then he dipped it and gave it? I you, think it was all, I think they all, I think Yahuda's sitting right there, I think they all know. So like right there, he exposed everything? Yeah, I, think, I, I mean, well, if you're young, they don't quite understand what he's going to do. They thought he was going to steal something, but... Uh, well, yeah, I mean, and so, well, this is interesting stuff. Um, he gave it to Yahuda of Kerioth of Shimon, and after the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Yahushua therefore said to him, what you do, do quickly. Um, thoughts? Satan entered into him. Um, Messiah said, says, do it. Told him to do it fast. Say, make it fast. Make, don't, don't, don't make him. Why would he say that? Why would he say, go, go quickly? Because right. he already knew he was exposed. He didn't want to be near this guy anymore. Or he knew this evil intent. The guy had already made it up. Um, I think it was just like, get it over with. Get this whole thing over with. I mean, because normal humans, if you knew something like this was going to happen and the guy was right there, you, you would probably talk this guy down. Right? Hey, man, you're, you're going crazy. What's wrong with you? You're, stop you're going to go things. try to get me killed with the freaking Pharisees. These guys are out of their minds. Lock this dude in the room for a while. So yeah. He chills out. Keffa, you know, put some hands on this guy, right? Show him some fisherman love, right? And... uh Let's continue on. 28. But no one at the table knew why he said this to him. For some were supposing, because Yahuda had the bag, that Yahushua was saying to him, buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give somewhat to the poor. So having received the piece of bread, he went out straightway, and it was night. When therefore he went out, Yahushua said, Now the bin of Adam has been esteemed, and Yahuwah has been esteemed in him. Okay, why did he say this? After, um, yeah, after Judas left, why would why would he say this? Why is he uh, esteemed? What what point? What does this matter? Like this moment right here? Because that was that was like the prayer yeah before let let your name be esteemed and let me be esteemed through you. The the prayer yeah before the previous chapter and it's like it's come to pass right. He's been esteemed by the people. He was praised by the people. The people all came to him. He, they, he was esteemed. People were praising Elohim through his name. Yeah, I, I, this is the part I don't get, though. He says, when therefore he went out. So basically, when Judas went out, Yahushua said, now the bin of that I think like the real esteemed. ceremony begins, like the real like festival begins with them because now they have the demon out of their midst. Hmm. Interesting. 32. If Yahuwah had been esteemed in him, Yahuwah shall also esteem him in himself and straight away esteem him. Wow. What did this just say? That is confusing. If, if Yahuwah had been esteemed in him, Yahuwah shall also esteem him in himself and straightaway esteem him. Okay, so this is talking about the verse right above that, 31, right? He's finally being esteemed. And then it says, if Yahuwah was esteemed in him, which he was, Yahuwah shall also esteem him in himself. Okay, so he's talking about Yah having esteem in himself because of his son, mm, right? I think it, so. Yeah, well, it's... it's I guess a, like a sense of, of pride or satisfaction that Messiah is committing to this and doing what he's, he's about to do. 33. Little children, yet a little while while I am with you. You shall seek me. And as I said to the Ahudium, where I am going, you are unable to come. I also say to you, a renewed covenant. Oh, excuse me, not a renewed covenant. A renewed command I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another. Okay, now is this a command? Because we've been looking, this whole section was supposed to be looking for law, statutes, and commandments of Messiah Yahushua. He said a renewed commandment, I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you. I mean, it's not a new command, it's renewed, but... Um, what, what commandment do we have that we love one another as... It's love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, and, um, sorry, yawning here. Um, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Um, is this a, is this something new or is this, is this just a, do we need to add this to the, I think we should because it's something Yehoshua commanded specifically, so he's probably. Okay. So we do want to add this? I would say, yeah. Okay. Um, and what is the commandment? Blo love, love one another Lord. as I have loved you. Yeah. And that's huge because Messiah definitely loved these guys. 35. By this shall all know that you are my Talmudian. If you have love for one another. Shimon Kepha said to him, Adonai. Where are you going? Yahushua answered him, Where I am going, you are unable to follow me now. But afterwards, you shall follow me. Kepha said to him, Adonai, 
Why am I unable to follow you now? I shall lay down my life for you. Yahushua answered him, Shall you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, the cock shall not crow at all until you have denied me three times. All right. Um, Kepha's taking a bus ride. We're getting near the end of John. It's getting, getting to another crucifixion. We're right. Get, we're getting it's to the, the, the parts I don't like of these, which is the crucifixion, which is um, it's just it's just a bad bad time here. But thoughts on this all, oh, gentlemen? Um, let me have a trait here. It's a... Uh, this is why everyone calls him the betrayer. They always say Judas because this is there right here. So Judas the betrayer. Yeah, we everyone just uses that whenever someone betrays. They always call you Judas. Is that why we use it as a swear word? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no, we don't use it. My mother does though, which is the oddest thing. And I, and unfortunately, I she will say Judas. She will say the word Judas as a a slang term. I grew up with this. I had no idea what she meant, and she probably has no idea what she means either. But um, somehow that has carried on, and so. Um, I do use um, the name of Judas as a bad word, and I don't know why. So I should probably stop that. But anyway, um, for now, um, that is it. Much love to everybody out there, our little family out there. We love you guys very, very much. I hope you have a wonderful day. We hope you guys have a wonderful day. Hope you guys are blessed. Hope you guys are reading your scriptures. Hope you guys are getting close to our creator in all things. So thank you guys very much. Have a wonderful day. All right. All right. All right.